From the station you count on for local news that matters. This is KRK 4 News at 5. Strong storms, heavy rain, and an EF2 tornado being blamed for the deaths of two people in Arkansas and a number of water rescues underway today. Thank you for joining us tonight at 5. I'm Bob Clausen. And I'm Ashley Katz. We have team coverage of this deadly tornado and also the dangerous flooding that is continuing across the state at this hour. We want to begin in southwest Arkansas. That is where KARK Force Ken Bufa is live tonight in Nashville, where the small Howard County community is now mourning the death of a mother and father. Ken. That's right, Ashley. If you look to my left, you can see the sheer power of the this EF2 tornado that stormed through this neighborhood. But if you look right over my shoulder, you'll see the power and compassion of friends and neighbors coming together to help those families who have lost so much. Sort of like dominoes when the first one hit. Hit the first trailer, it rolled into the second trailer. All the rest are meeting up out there and faster. These mobile homes at RJ Trailer Park leveled after an EF2 tornado pummeled this Nashville neighborhood. Right now, I would say that the winds are over 100 miles per hour. Family and friends sifting through debris, searching for what they can keep and remembering what they have lost. Beautiful little family, and they love their daughter very much. Michael and Melissa Munahan were killed. Officials say one of the toppled trailers was theirs. When the married couple was found this morning, their 18-month-old daughter Emily was shielded between them safe and alive. And her husband gave up their life for their child. Two other neighbors were critically injured and have been taken to the hospital. Town crews and friends now working to clean up. Tracy Mays knew Melissa personally. Just texted me Happy Mother's Day yesterday. And says their sacrifice has changed her life. I went home and hugged my little newborn grandson and thought, you just never know. You never know when the last time you're going to see somebody is. Now, I spoke to the people helping behind me. They said they're going to be working until dark. There are more than 2,000 people in Nashville without power from this storm. I also spoke to the parents of that couple that passed. They said they're going to check on Emily to make sure she's okay. We're live in Nashville. Ken Bufa, KRK4 News, back to you. All right, Ken, thanks very much. And that storm system that brought a tornado to southwest Arkansas, also dumping heavy rains in central Arkansas. KRK4 is Melissa Schroeder joining us now live. She is near the borders of Saline and Garland counties with a lot more on this. And the rain may have come down. Now it's time to deal with some flooding out there, Melissa. Absolutely, Bob. You want to see some serious flooding. Take a look behind me because it appears this river seems to be getting higher by the minute. This is the Saline River and people who live out here who've lived there here their, their whole lives tell me this is about the highest they've seen it with several feet above normal. And you want to talk about a lot of flooding. Take a look at where this is emptying out into. This used to be completely dry. This is a, a sh an area out here where horses stay and uh, those horses actually had to be removed to higher ground so they would be safe. Want to take a look at some video we shot just a couple of minutes ago, and this is going to give you a better idea of what we're seeing here on Narrows Road. As you look at this video, I got a story to tell you. A couple hours ago, a major rescue out here, an intense rescue, where an elderly couple was stuck in their mobile home out in this area, and uh, firefighters, sheriff's deputies, rescue crews had to go into a situation to help these folks out. I'm told that they did get out of their home safely, and they are okay tonight, and uh, we got much more on that story coming up tonight at 10 o'clock. Meanwhile, speaking to the Lonsdale Fire Chief, he expects the levels to be this high or even higher into the late evening hours. So something you want to be aware of if you plan on traveling. We're reporting live tonight in Saline County. Melissa Schroeder, KRK4 News. Melissa, thanks. Buses in the Bryant School District also did not run today due to washed out roads in that area. And Bryant Boys and Girls Club also had to cancel its after school programs for the day. The people living on the Washita River in Garland County reeling tonight after rain flooded homes and damaged docks there. Care for Shannon Miller joining us now live from the river in Shannon. Uh, water receded yet or are we expecting it to continue to rise? Bob, it is starting to recede, which is good news. And for a lot of folks who moved out here, they did so so they could be close to the water. Had no idea, though, it would get this close to them earlier today. Out here by the river, majority of these docks here seeing water levels higher than most of these residents have ever seen before. I just didn't intend on being that close. Just one month after moving into his new waterfront home. It was coming over the road pretty good mm. and into the yard and then out into the lake. James Coward says the Wachita River is too close for comfort. Somewhere between 4 and 5 o'clock it went from 
about that rock up to about an inch away from the doorway right there. Calvert's new next door neighbor woke him up early Monday morning after the water took over his home. We didn't get woke up like he did. He woke up wet. The Red Cross now helping his neighbors whose home is covered with muddy water. We'll have to pull something in. Downstream, a 40-year royal resident. A lot of flooding, a lot of road closings. Is reeling after the rain. I couldn't get to work this morning. <laughs> But Dennis says the weather isn't the only thing biting. I guess it's brought the catfish up in, into the uh, creek here. His family and friends say the downpour means more catches at their regular fishing hole. Can't control the water. And like the fish on the end of their line, Dennis says you never know when the rain in Royal will strike again. We don't have our share of rain for this month. I think that's what most folks would say here. Just to give you a little bit of perspective, earlier around noontime we were out here, this dock had water about a foot higher here, so definitely is receding, which is good news for the folks who live around here. They are glad to see that, and hopefully all of this other water that's in their backyards will start to dry up. We are live in Royal Shannon Miller, KRK, 4 News. Thanks, Shannon. And many other roads, bridges, and waterways were hit hard by the flooding. Heavy rain soaked the soil, causing this major crack in the road. This one on Ragweed Valley in Royal Arkansas as well. This boat became unmoored and then floated off into Lake Catherine in Hot Springs. Low bridges dangerous after the high waters. For this bridge, they became too high. This is on Jesseville or Blakely Trail in Jesseville. And last but not least, just this simple photo snapped by the Yale County Sheriff with a sign warning drivers roads unsafe when underwater. Don't forget, our severe weather coverage will continue both here on air and online at ArkansasMatters.com. About $15 million in state funds sitting in an out-of-state bank account with few people on the state level, including lawmakers, even knowing it existed. KRK spent two months investigating a nine-member state board that many people have probably never heard of. But in the past two years, millions of dollars have been in its, its discretion, sitting outside the state, going unaudited, and answering some tough, answers rather tough to come by, even for state lawmakers. When we don't know where it's at, or how to get access to it, or how much exactly is in it, it's, it's just hard to, to do anything. Tonight on KRK4 News at 10, Marcy Manley tracks down the $15 million lawmakers had a hard time finding, including speaking to former board members who claim financial oversight for the board is lacking at best. Money Matters. Find out which Central Arkansas University is facing major cuts, even though it's debuting a groundbreaking of a $20 million facility. Plus, he's no Bear Bryant. But he was a bear in Bryant. We'll have the latest on where this little bear is now. And I'm sure there's a lot of folks across Arkansas that are glad this past weekend is over. Heavy rain as well as flooding and severe weather. Things have quieted down and will stay quiet for the next several days. A little bit more rain on the way, but nothing too significant. In Little Rock, 1.66 inches of rain since midnight. 80 and 64, the high and low for the day. Take a look at your forecast in just a couple minutes. From the station that brings you local news that matters, this is KARK 4 News at 5 in high definition. With Bob Clausen, Ashley Katz, and Chief Meteorologist Keith Monahan.